This is the review for Ultimate Spider-Man issue 85 and there is so much stuff that happens in this issue, so get ready. What is going on guys, welcome to this video, my name is Cameron and this is the review, as I've already said, for Ultimate Spider-Man issue 85 and so much stuff happens in this issue. I think this is one of the most drastic issues that we've had in a while, so it's really, really exciting. If there are any of you guys just joining us, we have been on a mission to review every single issue of Ultimate Spider-Man, going from issue 1 all the way up to issue 133 and beyond, and even into the Miles Morales comic series. So, yeah, we're on issue 85 right now and it is going crazy. Now, what happened in the previous issue? Well, we saw Spider-Man jump into Hammerhead's house with Black Cat, and when he actually landed in there, there were all these villains and superheroes, including Iron Fist, Hammerhead, we've got Elektra, we've got Black Cat, we've got Spider-Man, we've got Moon Knight, we've got Hammerhead's friends, and then we've got, of course, Iron Fist's friend, which I can't actually remember the name of, I can never remember the name, but yeah, there's quite a lot of characters, and there was so much stuff going on, and we saw that Moon Knight got stabbed, we saw that everyone got webbed up, we saw that Hammerhead actually saw the identity of Moon Knight and took his picture, and then at the end of the issue we saw Spider-Man get the crap beaten out of him by Elektra and launched out of a window. So yeah, quite a, quite an average issue, yeah. But guys, this is the Ultimate Spider-Man issue 85 review, I cannot wait to show you guys what happens in it and get reviewing it, it's so awesome and it's probably the craziest issue with so much stuff going on one after the other. So guys, without further ado, let's get into this review and let's see what happens. Alright, so opening up the issue, we're going into Ultimate Spider-Man issue 85. And the issue is continuing with Spider-Man still knocked out laying on the car. And I actually really love this set piece of the art style, where it sort of pans upwards, and you've got Electra stood in the shadow figure of the window. It's so awesome to see that sort of dark side of this comic, and as you can tell, this comic is taking no prisoners when it comes to the action side and the dark side, and just kind of seems like a really dark and serious tone compared to usual. And I actually really, really like it, but it's not that sort of dark side where we had with the Venom saga, it's actually more the dark side where you feel like the stakes are higher and people can actually be killed, and it's every man for themselves pretty much in this situation. And not only are the characters on edge in this comic, but so are you as the reader as you read through it just because it's so intense and there's one thing after another happening, and as you can see on screen, Hamhead's just revealed that Elektra is no longer on Hamhead's paycheck sort of thing, so we can't really pay her for anything. So she just straight up turns around and stabs Hammerhead and literally just claws the crap out of him and then kicks him through the window down next to Spider-Man. And I just love the brutality of this comic, really not holding back with anything. And I like the direction that Brian Michael Bendis as the writer has suddenly taken this comic series in. It's genuinely awesome. So anyway, something that I found quite amusing was when Spider-Man was knocked out, the police were actually fanboying over Spider-Man a little bit, and then as soon as he woke up, they all started aiming their guns at Spider-Man again. And it just seems so funny and actually quite ironic, especially since the last time when Spider-Man and Black Cat were outside in Chinatown, I think it was, and the police aimed their guns at Spider-Man as well, even though he was the person trying to help. So it just shows this kind of dynamic that keeps repeating itself, between Spider-Man and the police to really show why Spider-Man takes off straight after he's thwarted a crime instead of sticking around. And now obviously guys, I have mentioned that this comic is a hell of a lot darker compared to the other Ultimate Spider-Man comics and a lot more serious with the stakes and everyone can actually die in these situations. And as you can see as to what's unfolding on the pages in front of you, Elektra and Black Cat are having a fight and Elektra just randomly falls to the floor until we pan down and see that Moon Knight's actually thrown one of his blades into the back of Elektra's head and killed her. Like, where the heck did that come from? Just everyone is being brutal as hell. Spider-Man got launched out the window and knocked out. Then Hammerhead was killed and launched out of the window. Then Black Cat and Elektra had a fight. And now Elektra has been stabbed in the back of the head. Like, seriously, this comic is super dark and I really, really love it. And I feel like this is just because you can feel that the stakes are actually higher and people are actually dying, like there's actual consequences for what's happening as we read them. And I think the best part is that because these are superhero characters, usually when things are happening, like if Spider-Man's fighting the Green Goblin, you can't really relate to it as much because he's fighting like a massive green monster. But when people are actually killing each other and being stabbed and genuinely dying, that's pretty much what happens in real life. Like people do actually die from stuff like that. So you can relate to it a lot more and it feels a lot more serious and personal 
to not only you, but obviously the characters in the comic as well. It's really, really good. I love it. And now going into the calmer, more relaxed side of the comic, but equally as exciting, we've got Spider-Man and Black Cat meeting on the rooftop to talk about what's just happened. Black Cat obviously surprising him, and Spider-Man pretty much just completely done with Black Cat, because what you've got to remember is that Black Cat actually went onto Hammerhead's side and double-crossed Spider-Man. So she's not exactly in Spider-Man's good books at the minute. But moving throughout the comic, as you can see what's unfolding on the pages in front of you, Spider-Man is frozen in the moment as Black Cat teases Spider-Man and actually goes to unmask him and kiss him, only to then be greeted by a 15-year-old Peter Parker who's under the Spider-Man mask, and the situation takes a complete opposite turn, with Black Cat literally, literally throwing up on Spider-Man and running away, and I think that couldn't have gone any worse for Peter Parker whatsoever. But I've got to say, the first time I was ever reading this issue a couple of years ago, it was so funny. I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was just one of those cliche moments that you see in movies, and I thought it was executed brilliantly. It was awesome. Especially because Peter Parker is still a 15-year-old kid, and so actually starts to freak out when he gets into situations like that. It's genuinely awesome. But now going into the final part of the issue, where Kingpin is talking to a mystery character. We don't really know who it is, but they're discussing plans, they're discussing what happens, they seem to know a lot of details about what's happened that night between Hammerhead and Elektra and Spider-Man. And then the panels pan around, brighten up and reveal that the mystery character is Captain DeWolf of the police force, who Spider-Man trusts, who we trust as the reader. And it turns out she's working for the Kingpin this entire time. And I love how sinister she looks in this final moment in the comic, really showing that sort of dark side that she's been hiding away from all of us. So it's going to create some interesting scenarios from now on between her and Spider-Man. But inevitably getting onto the very final page of this comic, Spider-Man walks through the door with Aunt May stood there waiting for him. And due to all the lying and sneaking out of school and coming home late and stuff like that, Aunt May is actually threatening to kick Peter Parker out of the house. And that is what I love about the Ultimate Universe's Aunt May because she's still sort of young enough to be a cool Aunt May and not old enough to be like considered like an old lady or anything like that. Like she's really awesome and she's not afraid to take initiative and actually kick Peter Parker out of the house. Like she knows how to stand her ground and look after herself. It's pretty freaking cool. But that is the end of the issue, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. So that issue was probably one of the most mental issues that we've had in quite a long time. I mean, Spider-Man got launched out of the window. Then after him, I think, if I remember, we got Hammerhead launching out of the window and then Elektra launching out of the window as well. It was just one person after another flying out of this building. And not to mention, we also got Hammerhead being stabbed as well. Elektra going back on her word. Just, it was mental. There was so much stuff going on. And I think one of the things that actually stuck out to me is that Captain DeWolf is working for the Kingpin. There's so many surprises throughout this Ultimate Spider-Man series. I don't know how the writers actually come up with it. Brian Michael Bendis is just an ultimate writer. No pun intended. But the action and just, if you think about it, Spider-Man didn't really do anything the entire issue in terms of fighting any of the other villains. It all took place from within the building while Spider-Man was outside dealing with the police officers. And one of the really stupid things was that the police officers started aiming their guns at Spider-Man again and Captain DeWolf had to go back there and stop them again. Why are the police officers actually this dumb? I don't think they're like that in real life, so I don't know why they're written like that. Spider-Man just has really bad luck with police as always. But of course, to address another major thing that happened in the issue was Black Cat actually about to kiss Spider-Man and the complete opposite thing happened. She saw that he was a 15 year old kid and actually ran off. And that was one of the funniest things when she took Spider-Man's mask off and Peter just had his eyes closed ready to kiss her. I thought that was really, really funny, but she actually threw up on him. It, that was was it really that bad? Like, did she actually feel that sick? So, of course, that wasn't really a nice thing to happen to Spider-Man, so I'm sure we're going to see something of him talking about it, maybe within the next few issues, maybe in the next issue, and see if he can finally get back with Mary Jane. But, of course, guys, the next issue of Ultimate Spider-Man is Annual Issue 1. So, the next issue is the Ultimate Spider-Man Annual. It's actually got some major things in it that continue within the next few issues of Ultimate Spider-Man. So, do not miss the Ultimate Annual Issue 1 review because it's quite a crazy issue, and I'm sure a lot of you guys will like it, especially a certain X-Men character 
getting into these Ultimate Spider-Man comics as well. Cannot wait. Now, going back into the events of Ultimate Spider-Man issue 85, we know that Electra actually got stabbed in the back of the head by Moon Knight's shuriken thing. So we've got Hammerhead in a coma from being stabbed. We've got Moon Knight in a coma from being stabbed. Electra's been killed. Spider-Man and Black Cat were gonna kiss and then they didn't. And then of course, Spider-Man got home and Aunt May actually told him that he's gonna be kicked out of the house if he keeps lying to her. So many things happened in this comic. It was awesome. I'm gonna give this issue, guys, a solid like 10 out of 10. It was just excitement throughout the entire way. And I know it kind of felt like a short issue, but that's just because it took place all in one location, specifically inside the building and outside of the building. I absolutely loved it. So yeah, that is the end of this review, guys. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below. I would love to hear your thoughts on this comic. Guys, let's aim for 300 likes on this just because the comic was so good. And now guys, if you want more of these videos, hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram to talk about these comics, to see my Instagram pictures, to see my Instagram story of these videos being made, etc. And yes, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. See you later.